Hi, this is Claire again and I'm very happy that you all find back to my new channel uh, after the accidental deletion. Uh, this makes me very happy and we wanted in the last year we wanted to go on with the uh, folk magic and then I had very much writing projects. I'm an author on witchcraft and natural magic and uh, also tarot and things like that in Germany and um, yeah they, I had many writing projects and so this was a little bit unlucky then I uh, could not do videos here anymore and then after it my channel broke down so new start new year new start and um, we start again yes um, this is a, a, just a short uh, introduction into European folk magic the field where we will be talking about because it is a very broad it is a very rich field yeah uh, the uh, expression to say European folk magic is in itself a little bit difficult. It is um, similar as you would say uh, African folk magic. Uh, Africa is very big, it is a whole continent and so um, this is always a bit short if you make it like this because uh, a granny in Italy will do another kind or style of magic than somebody in Sweden for example. The traditional way, yeah. The climate and the uh, also the um, the temper of the people, and um, the traditions and the uh, culture and so on. Everything has its role in magic too. But uh, you will also find things that are very similar, things that are known to many regions. Of course, my main region is uh, the German-speaking um, parts like uh, Swiss and Aust um, Austria are also uh, German speaking or kind of German. Um, but I also have a, have a glimpse to the uh, Eastern Europe, like Hungary, like um, going in the uh, direction of Russia and so on, because as you might have heard in my, my introduction, in my first years I lived in the uh, eastern part of Germany before the Berlin Wall came down so we had a certain closeness to the Russian legends and so on the Russian uh, magical fairy tales were part of my childhood and things like that and um, they opened much of, um, of magical imag imagination for me so to say okay so to make it short uh, we can consider Europe as a very multifaceted uh, part of the world. I will tell it, uh, I will call it European folk magic to make things uh, short and to get it, but uh, of course this is the same as if you would say African magic. It is uh, a bit short but helpful for us here in theory. Um, yeah, and there's also um, something that is often uh, often distinguished into low magic and high magic. Yeah, folk magic would be low magic, high magic would be ceremony, ceremonial magic, the things that were in the, in the, um, where the kings lived and they had their magician, their astrologer and things like that. Um, but in my experience, in my research, things often intermingled. They were mixed up. People, uh, for example, the days of the week and their meanings, they came from the old Roman week and uh, they were, uh, they have uh, references to the astrologi astrological, oh my god, what a word, um, uh, to the seven planets in astrology and so um, the, the uh, normal people who were villagers or uh, living in small towns or things like that, they uh, also had uh, new systems. So you can't make a clear distinguishing line between uh, high magic and low magic. Yeah, Of course, most people, they could not read or uh, things like that. For example, I have something here when I find it. There were uh, calendars and there are, uh, until today, they are printed like this old um, farmer calendar. This is an old farming calendar. And um, there you can see uh, that people could not read in the old days because everything, the month, this is for example January, I try to make it that it is not too light in the camera. For example, the January, you see here everything is explained in pictures. 
So people who could not read uh, would know, oh, this is this saint, this is a day of uh, that saint, this is um, fasting days or um, days uh, where the moon is uh, full moon, new moon and so on. And also the, um, here you see it, the signs in which the moon is. So everything was uh, set or even here the... Uh, star sign that uh, was the regent of the or the chief sign of the month and so you see everything was explained in pictures so the uh, people who could not read they knew how to see it and how to find out for example here is also these uh, looking like secret signs so to say I will try it here you see uh, those signs they tell about weather predictions and things like that, because of, uh, people had no uh, weather report in TV or things like that, they had to take a look at things and there are, for example, certain plants that are used to determine the weather or you looked uh, how the animals behaved, there were um, certain signs yeah, people looked at. So everything was also possible without a written word. Yeah, and this is, there is of course a distinguishing um, in a certain amount that uh, some things like the old books or uh, scriptures from the Arabian countries that came with the, um, with the, I don't know how it is called in English, the, um, when the, the knights and so on went to Jerusalem in uh, the early Middle Ages, we call it Kreuzzug, um, yeah, you, you might know what I mean uh, when they wanted to uh, go there, the, all the nights they ride it there and uh, it was a time where uh, during all those battles there was also a cultural exchange and those books, for example, and the knowledge of the Arabian world influenced much here of the magic, you find it. And also, uh, of course, Kabbalah and things like that. Yeah, this was uh, and still is important in certain magical circles so um, yeah there is a distinguishing but there is always many things that are mixed up in low and in high magic you can't say uh, they never touched because they were often uh, there's something above and something below but uh, there is much in the middle so to say okay so this was a short introduction we will go on in the next videos if you have questions don't hesitate me to ask of course we can also speak about uh, general questions and magic here. Um, I'm very happy to explain if I can explain it and we will go on the next videos. I will pick up the topics. Uh, of course this is um, like a body of knowledge. You can just pick out some things but uh, it is very difficult to say and to define everything exactly because things that were, um, that were uh, made in one way and one town in the next town or even the next village they were totally different and traditions are something that even five kilometers between two villages and it can be totally different what people do until today you see it for example uh, with the uh, folk traditions in uh, big holidays like um, Christmas or Easter yeah there is much alive still and there you see that it can be very very different so we just can take out small things and have look at looks at them but we can't uh, say it is always that way there is a definition there is a system we can put it into small boxes because this is not how folk magic works and I think this is a no part of the world how it works okay so I'm very happy uh, to be back and we will start with this very interesting topic